give us a run through of how this all came together so quickly after you know Noah had been with the military for well a lot of it the work on it had been done before we drafted my understanding it was about a year ago almost that he had put in four papers to be transferred to the reserves and they had told him that it would possibly be between nine and 12 months, but no promises attached, no definitive timelines. And probably when that happened, uh, that it would be a two to three month period in which he would then be told, okay, you're gonna, this is gonna happen on such and such date and, and give him that buildup time. So really, even though we'd be in contact and Sam Fold is, was really our contact person with Noah and with his agent, uh, their, their thought process was, they had no idea when this was going to happen. They had, they really had none. They thought it would happen at some time, potentially this year. But then again, with that two to three month period, uh, we were told the last time, which was, uh, he was in, I believe Jacksonville. Um, he was out east for a while. And we had been told that he was actually going to go to Japan for um, the month of January we were surprised and we were contacted to kind of follow up in February just a couple of weeks ago that he did not take that trip. And just as early as last week, we were told um, that the potential was that he was going to be given his transfer papers. So we really, a lot of this has come quickly. We've been interested. We've been in contact. We, But we really had no control of when the date was going to be given and also we had no control of exactly setting all this up we just whatever they said uh, we had to be prepared to deal does he have any military obligations left or I cannot answer that I don't even when you get transferred into the reserves there are some uh, apparent if you read the rules some continued commitments it's not as he's discharged but uh, he doesn't even know that at this point Okay, and um, lastly, does he, um, or is there any concern about the fact that he hasn't pitched in pro ball since 2019? Like, do you know if he's been doing work on the side since well, then or? Sure, well, any, oh yeah. sure. I mean, he hasn't pitched in three years. So, um, and we knew when we drafted him, it's a long shot. Um, as he said, at times he's played catch when he could throughout the time period. When he heard about this, um, again, he told us to Sam a couple of weeks ago that this potential existed. He started playing some long toss with the catch and then long toss with a friend of his. He was off the mound for the first time last week, I think it was. And Sam asked him how he felt. He said, I felt as if I hadn't been on the mound for three years. <laughs> so, um, so sure, there's, uh, there's some... I mean, let's, I mean, the reality is it's a gamble, right? I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, we, I, I do not know when he picks up the ball and starts throwing off the mound and putting something into it once his arm is in good enough shape, and we still have to work with him on that where he is. I don't know if he's going to throw 85 or 95, but we feel it's worth the gamble. We felt it was worth the risk, and knowing the type of individual, I know he's in great shape. Um, but he's also hasn't, as you said, hasn't pitched in three years. So um, will he be able to do it? We'll see. He's a quality person with a tremendous work ethic, with a lot of ability. And uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, Matt, back left. Dave, you were in the draft room uh, when he was selected by the Red Sox in 2019. Can you give us a sense of, at the time, uh, maybe what uh, your opinion or your people's opinions were on his potential and uh, as, as a prospect at that point. Sure. I know three years ago is a long time. Sure. Um, I was in the draft room and um, Mike Rickard was our scouting director. Uh, he did and he did a great job for us. Uh, Mike and our staff loved him. We thought he was a number one draft type choice. Uh, but nobody was taking him number one because of the commitment. It was a matter of when we actually took him to try to get him. We had thought the potential was at that time that he might go right into the reserves potentially later in the year because he started pitching, as you know, um, that year. He pitched for us in uh, the New York Penn League. And we really liked his stuff. We thought he was the top. Well, I can't speak because I don't remember exactly who was taken at the top, but if not the top, one of the top couple college pitchers in the country. So we liked him a great deal. We thought he had the potential to be a top of the rotation type starter. Corey, in the front right. 
Uh, Dave, with Gregory Soto being the only guy who's not yet in camp, Rob mentioned yesterday that the closer it gets to the date where the guys have to leave for the WBC, that a decision might have to be made. Just what's the latest on that situation? Well, he's dealing with immigration um, issues. Uh, the, the plus, he, he has two plus as far as conditioning is concerned. One is he pitched winter ball for a while because he wa wanted to prepare to go to the WBC. And the second thing is, is that where he lives, he's only about 15 minutes away from our academy. So he continues to throw as if he was here in camp. We have the same type of regimen set up for him because we have personnel down there. So his arm's in good shape. So it's just a matter of seeing when he can get, get into the States and um, if he gets enough time to go over and, and still pitch there. His, and arm will, his arm should be in shape. And then with the, the bench, do you look at it as if there's like two open spots among position players and uh, along those lines, like where does defensive flexibility play into that, specifically the ability to play center field? Well, we have, uh, I think, three bench players that are people on our bench that are solidified in Stubbs as our backup catcher, Sosa, um, and then Harrison. So we have three guys. Um, we have to have somebody else that can play center field uh, because on our roster as it's set up right now with those guys on our club um, and I'm taking Sosa out of the picture there at, in center field right now I mean if Marsh needs a break or he needs a break, we don't have anybody to do that that's solidified so Guthrie is a potential in that regard and we like Guthrie we're going to see how Sosa looks in center field um, if he can go out there and he can play there on a somewhat regular basis uh, as, a, as needed because Marsh will be our regular center fielder, um, that could affect our decision and then who we decide to keep. It could create different flexibility. But no matter what, somebody has to be able to play center field. If it's Sosa, if it's Guthrie, if it's Cave, even though he's left-hand hitting, one of those players have to make the club because we have to have somebody that can go out there and play center. Okay, Alex on the left here. You mentioned that Song is a gamble but was also you viewed him as one of the top collegiate pitchers in the country. Um, what makes him worth that gamble? Like, what specifically appealed to you? Well, I, I mean, I think when it, when it comes down to uh, when you draft, rarely when you're drafting in a Rule 5 draft, do you have a chance to select somebody that's a top of the rotation type player, pitcher, or a star major league player? Because organizations protect those guys, even if they're unable. I mean, they protect them because the risk of losing them, uh, if somebody carries them, you don't want to do that. So for us, the risk, the situation is it's a risk for the draft price is $100,000, and if you return them, it's $50,000. So that's not much of a risk um, financially. He's not counted on our roster. So we're not, we haven't even lost a player to put him on the 40-man roster. And we thought it was worth the gamble with the high upside potential that he would could bring. Could is a key. And so for us, we just thought having that type of potential. Now, it's apparent um, if he is to make our 26-man roster, it is going to have to be in the bullpen. There's no way we're going to be able to stretch him out to be able to be a starting pitcher. But we need some. We have another spot, or who knows? Too people get hurt. You're looking for for individuals, but. Um, we just thought it was worth the upside risk to take somebody like him. I and if it doesn't work, then that's okay. There's nothing ventured, nothing lost. Okay, Howard right in the front. Dave, how much easier is it for you to build a team when the owner apparently just kind of gives you the freedom to just spend money? <laughs> well, I didn't know he did that personally. Um, <laughs> But um, I, I would say that um, the part that makes it, because uh, we don't have that, that ability. Um, John and, and, and ownership is very, um, are very kind to us. They want to win. And I think that's the part that is the, um, the driving force that makes it. We're on the same page as far as trying to win, but also not only trying to win now, but to put together an organization that could win for years to come. And, and to me, those type of organizations also blend young players into it. We have an outstanding, I, I believe now, player development system with Preston Madlingley heading that. Our amateur director of amateur scouting, Brian Barber, is outstanding. Uh, we've made some changes. Sal Gustinelli heads our Latin American operations, but Jorge Valandia is very involved there. 
so we're trying to really we've done a lot to help our pipeline of individuals coming and then when you can do that correctly and then be in a position where you can also um, you still have to make wise decisions but uh, to be driven to win and have a great organization uh, that's what you want to try to do the Mets owner has already said that he's not done and it obviously comes down to spending uh, do you feel like you're in the position to be able to compete when at the trade deadline apparently he's just going to do whatever he has to do well one thing um, and I will say and no offense to the Mets organization or any other or even ours um, there's not always a direct correlation to the highest spending club and the clubs that win I've seen this for a long time and that always doesn't work so the way I would say is you need to spend wisely and you also need to be fortunate I mean you need to be healthy um, we will have flexibility, I'm sure, to do things that, if we need to do them. Um, hey, we, we are in a, in a division with two outstanding clubs right now. Miami's got is an improving club. Washington's a building club. So it's, it's going to be a challenge to even win our division. I mean, we've got good clubs. You want to make the postseason, you want to go on. But there's other good teams in the National League, too. So it's a situation that you want to make wise decisions. You need to be fortunate. You need to play well. So a lot of things need to happen in your favor to win. But that's our focus, that's our goal, and I think we have the ability to do so. Okay. Matt in the back left. Dave, from your vantage point, what have you made of how Andy Painter has handled himself both on and off the field so far here in camp as a 19-year-old? Well, off the field is more hearsay because I'm not hanging with Andy very much. Um, and that's, I'm just teasing, but I mean, he's, uh, he's um, I've heard he handles himself very well, I, I think he's He's rooming with Abel and McGarry, and it's amazing because if Abel and McGarry were in other camps, they'd be getting a lot of attention. They're really good, um, which is which is fine because our their time will come too. But uh, he's been hanging with them, is my understanding. Uh, when I've talked to the player, and when I say this, they've brought his name up to me. Some of our veteran players, um, they say he's fit right in very well. Um, doesn't seem overwhelmed or overmatched. And I know on the field he's done very well. I watched him throw enough yesterday that he, you, you didn't have to be a, a front office person or a scout to know the type of stuff he had. And he also hung a break in ball to Schwarber, which, you, which he paid for. So it was good. But uh, Schwarber and, and JT has uh, also spoken to me about him and a couple others about how impressive he's been. He's been very impressive. We'll be looking forward to see him getting out in the, on the mound in the game and see how he handles himself. OK, right here in the middle. How exciting is it for you uh, to see a number of the players that will compete in the World Baseball Classic, but also at the same time a, a little nerve-wracking as well? Sure. I mean, I guess that's a good way to describe it. Um, we support the WBC strongly. We think it's great for Major League Baseball. Um, and, and so we, we do our best to support when our players want to play. As long as they're in shape and healthy, we, we have no problem when they want to do so. Um, but sure, it's always nerve-wracking when you see your players play for somewhere else. It's be the same when they're playing winter ball. You pick up that report on a daily basis. But somebody can get hurt in your own camp, too, when they're playing in games. So uh, our players really have wanted to play. And I think it's also a compliment to them and the organization when we have so many players that are playing and being asked to play for their individual uh, countries. So sure, um, we'll be pulling for them. We'll be watching them. And we'll be hoping they return healthy. Jason over here on the left. Uh, Dave, I have another question, but I wanted to ask you one thing about Noah Song. In your experience in the game, is, is there any precedent for a guy like this to make a major league roster? You know what? I knew you were going to ask that question. In 1985, <laughs> Pat Gillick on the Eastern Division Championships in the American League had two players drafted out of A-ball, Manny Lee and Lou Thornton. And they ended up winning 99 games that year and winning the division. And they both barely played all year long. So we played two players short, and they won 99 games. Of course, this is a guy who hasn't pitched, though, since 2019. So you have that element. Well, I don't think there's been somebody that's played, not played for three years in that regard. But I, there have been guys taking out A ball like that that don't really play very much or contribute. Um, and then they even had two players on that club. I remember at the time it was like, wow, but you know, Pat did such a good job with that Rule 5 draft. They took Kelly Gruber, I think, the year before. So he really used it to an advantage. And those two players, and of course Manny Lee had a really good big league career. And Lou Thornton did not have as long. 
but they did have uh, 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 two guys like that. But I thought you might ask that question. I know it's not completely relevant, <laughs> but I tried my best, so. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad that I, oh, I'm sure you did a lot of research, so I'm glad that <laughs> I helped out with that. Um, on, on Trey Turner, how much do you want him to run this year with these new rules? How much do you expect him to run? Well, that's, you know, that's a Rob Thompson question, but I do know that um, expect him. I know he'll run. Um, the amount that he runs, I think, will be determined upon um, maybe some A where he hits in the lineup. But secondly, it's an intro. I mean, there's no question he's still fast. He's one of the fastest guys in baseball. He can steal bases. But the combination of the wear and tear on your body of stealing bases, that's why a lot of times when players have been over 30, they still don't steal a bundle of bases in most cases. But um, we expect him to steal bases. We expect him to be very aggressive in that regard. I, I know he will be, but I don't have a specific number in mind that he will steal. And I, the game is more conducive now with the bigger bases and the pickoff moves to first place, the limitations on to the bases, that it's helpful for him. Okay, Destiny in the middle. Dave, do you have a possible update on an Aaron Nola extension, and what's the possibility of that getting done before the regular season? I have no update, and we generally don't update on players' uh, negotiations with players. I've always felt that they're between us and the player. Um, I can just say that uh, Aaron is a player that we want to keep in the organization for an extended time. Let's say there's a possibility that it doesn't get done before the regular season. Could Andrew Painter's performance during the season impact your decision to possibly keep him after and you know, retain him in free agency? Well, I'm not very good on the speculative nature of those type of things. But um, I, I don't think that you ever have enough good players. And, and so um, if you're in a position where Painter comes on and pitches tremendously, and we think he's going, no matter what happens this year, we think he's going to have a tremendous major league career. But having Painter and Nola of our organization for years to come would be something that would be good for us. Okay, Todd, right in the middle. What, uh, any thoughts on Reese Hoskins as well? He's another big guy come on in organization's willingness or need to, to keep him around. Sure. I would also, I mean, in Reese's case, just, you know, you have free agents like last year we had Segura. Um, he was in that position. Um, Reese is a tremendous player, tremendous person. Uh, he's done a lot for the organization. Um, and so we'll just analyze and see what takes place. But we, we love him. We think the world of him. And I just, out of curiosity, I know like projections, models, and predictions are just that. They don't really mean much. But I've had talked to a couple people like in uniform and they've noticed these model projections. Have you guys like a distant third with at 87 wins? I noticed, I'm sure it's come up in conversation sure. in the front office. What do you guys make of that? Well, it's a, I'm a little curious and sometimes, but, but I also will say uh, I think there's a few factors and that's why I I don't know that anybody predicted us playing the World Series last year. Um, but I think there's a couple things that to remember when they do the predictive natures. And actually, I was talking to John Middleton about it last night. Um, first of all, nobody knows there's the variable of Bryce Harper's situation. And I've seen, it's like, for example, I, I saw a lineup projected by somebody to be eighth ranked in Major League Baseball. But they said, well, if Bryce Harper comes back, they could be number one. So that's one thing they don't. Secondly, which surprises me, because they'd say, well, they only won 87 games last year. And I hear this repeatedly. And, and I get it. That's all we want. But if you look at the record when Rob Thompson took over, and we were 22 and 29, that record correlates to be a much better than an 87 game. The other thing that's always interesting, and I didn't even t touch on this, but I thought about it last night because we talked about it. When I've seen those predictive natures, the one thing they, they don't do is they don't take into account player improvement. So I think we have three young players on our club that play basically every day that can make the difference of us being an 87 win club and a much better club in Bryson Stott and Alec Baum and Brandon Marsh. I think those three have a chance to be continue to improve. Um, in addition to that, 
Castellanos did not have a good year, so people look at him and that. I think he will bounce back and have a good season. And they also don't include somebody like, let's say, an Andrew Painter being part of your club. They, they don't really include. So when you start putting that, we probably have more variables than some other clubs may. When you look at the Braves or, let's say, you look at the Mets, I don't know how many question marks that, with young players that they have in there. I think they're pretty well solidified. Maybe the Braves are shortstop with Grissom, maybe their fifth starter spot. But I think that some of those in our situation, people don't, they don't really know how to do, and, and I understand because I deal with the analytic and the projections all the time, and, and they have a hard time with those youngsters predicting they're going to be better. And then I just had one other Noah song question. So basically you guys have five weeks to build up a guy that hasn't pitched in three years and then make a decision. There's no extra time you get because he hasn't pitched in such a long time, right? Well, that, and that goes into the long shot. You know, the other thing, I, well, that is how the rule is if you read it. Um, however, there's a combination of rules here, too, because there's not only Rule 5 pick, there's a military list rule that gets involved. The one thing you want to be careful of, and that's, and I told this to Noah when I saw him yesterday, uh, we don't want him to get hurt, right? I mean, that's, so let's see where he is and how he, he moves forward, because you're in a position where he hasn't been off the mound in an extended period. So he's in a position where he, he needs to get himself in shape. And so we'll wait and we'll see what takes place. But I mean, you have to re realize, too, that some of these rules were written. Yeah, I mean, a I, mean I, I mean, yeah, before I was born. I mean, you know, that's it. <laughs> so because um, I read these rules when I started, they haven't changed. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Somebody asked me about the reserve list. And uh, so there are, there's, a, there's actually rules in Major League Baseball about players to get placed on reserve, right, going to reserves. And I, I asked the person, I said, did you ever hear of Kenny Holtzman? And they said, like, who? I said, well, I remember I was in Chicago as a kid. Kenny Holtzman was 9-0 and with the Cubs one year back, and he was in the reserves, and he would come in and out, and he'd pitch, and he was 9-0. and Well, they had never heard of him, but it was the same rule back then as it is now. <laughs> So, I, but I don't know the last player that's been in the reserves that have really performed like that. So, um, sometimes I even Major League Baseball at some of these they'll look at and say, "Hey, that," because the, nobody, I don't think anybody, wants to see this kid get hurt. Is it? Would it be surprising to see him appear in a Grapefruit League game before the end of the spring? No, I wouldn't be surprised. You would not be surprised. Okay. No. All right. so okay. uh, Matt, back left. Do Do you have recourse to? to place a player on the injured list if he is not ready to pitch because of a long layoff? Um, really, we get into technicality of the rules. I don't want to speculate on okay. different And things. I just wanted to ask you one last thing. What is what is Bryce's current uh, rehab activities, and, and when do you expect him to get there? I know Rob hinted at sometime early March. Yeah, um, he's doing well. In fact, he, because he, um, he texted me back and forth yesterday on a couple things. Um, he's doing very well uh, in his progress. Doctors are happy where he is. He's dry swinging at this point. He's been free to do that. Um, he's going to come into camp somewhere around you know, the 8th or 9th of March, somewhere around that time is our anticipated date that he'll be here. But he's doing great from a recovery perspective. Okay, great. If there's no further questions, we'll stop there. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's it. Thanks, okay. Dave. Thank you. Thanks for letting me do some research too. Like that. <laughs>
have plenty of time for lunch too, so we can you guys do whatever testing you guys need. All right. Um. I don't want to do a car wheel. I can move back and forth. It's seven seconds behind. People probably think I'm nuts. We're doing this as a test. If anyone's actually watching this, I'm not insane. Chris, hi. Do you want to sit here and do this? <laughs> it is weird to see yourself like seven seconds behind. I don't see any 